main system. Activating combat mode. Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be talking a little bit about Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. I don't think I need to tell you this, but Armored Core 6 is absolutely awesome. And it is a game that I'm currently strongly, strongly recommending to you. I think at this point this game is easily a top 5 contender for me in terms of top games for this year, in a year that is already fairly strong with new game releases. It delivers on exactly what I wanted for a new Armored Core game to be, outside of a couple of minor gripes, which are really not game breaking or deal breaking, but I will mention. So yeah, this is basically going to be my initial sort of review or first impressions. I'm currently about to close out chapter two. I've been basically playing nonstop since Friday, and I feel like at this point I have a pretty good overview of what the game has to offer, so I feel like I can give my opinions even though this is going to be super late. Anyways, in terms of spoilers, don't worry about anything because the footage you're going to be seeing on screen is only going to be from chapter 1. It will show the first sort of major boss, but again, this is nothing spoilerish, this is fairly early on in the game. Honestly, all I can say is, to sum up, I feel vindicated because I've been saying for years that FromSoft should revisit this series and I think they really struck a perfect balance between appealing to old fans of the series but also making the game sort of accessible to newcomers. I say sort of because, well, we'll talk about it, I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, before we get into that, I'm going to talk just briefly about why I'm not doing a full playthrough of this game on the channel. Eventually I am planning to get around to it, but honestly since Dark Souls 1 there hasn't been a new From release that I sort of just enjoyed at my own pace. I was always grinding for content for YouTube, and I thought, you know what, for Armored 6 I would do things differently. And man, let me tell you, it's so much fun to just sit down and play the game as much as I want to, when I want to, instead of constantly worrying about producing videos and thinking about, oh, I need to go edit so I can't play anymore. It was like, if I wanted to play for like four hours straight, I could just play for four hours straight. Now, like I said, don't worry, I heard this game has a pretty extensive New Game Plus mode that I really want to check out, and that's something I'm currently looking at for the channel itself. Anyways, back to the review itself. Armored Core 6 brings the exact modernization, in my opinion, that the series needed. As someone who's not a long-time fan, I've had some experience with Armored Core 5, which I sort of just picked up years ago, probably not like the best entry into the series, and Armored Core 3, which I found a little bit outdated and clunky. I feel like for this game, From struck the exact right balance between having a lot of the old and just the right amount of new. So, let's talk about the old. What returns? What returns for Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon is the mission-based gameplay. You're not gonna have like an open world, giant combat arenas or long distances to travel. This is at its core a mission-based game. There is still a huge focus on customization, buying weapons, buying new armor, boosters, legs, etc and also having the right setup for the right missions. There's still a lot of focus on the flying and the movement. You really need to learn and master how to control your AC because if you don't have that down, you are going to be struggling pretty early on. And the aiming is still around. I know this is something that people, especially fans of this series, were worried about, that there is now a lock-on in this game. However, that turned out to be, in my opinion, a non-issue, because you still absolutely have the option to free aim. In fact, free aiming is something I do probably 90% of the time, but the lock-on is there for new players, and it's also there for bosses and sort of one-on-one -on -one AC encounters where it really helps out. And going on to what's new, ACs control way, way better. I know we've already had fast ACs, I think in Armored Core 4, that had the sort of dual analog stick, sort of more modern controls, but the AC controls and movements feel better than ever. I feel like the right amount of balance between having a, like a weighty giant robot that you control and having something that's also fast and maneuverable was struck in that you don't feel like you're controlling an actual character. Uh, you know you're in a giant robot, but the movement is still really smooth and really sort of easy to understand and fast. 
The mission design, I feel like, has also been improved. Not only the structure and the objectives, which are more varied and there are more interesting missions, but also having more explicit objectives, having clearly marked objectives and having clear explanations on what you're supposed to do, which is something that I feel like was occasionally missing in the mission design of previous games. They could be really cryptic and could end up with you getting lost and just wandering around not knowing what to do. And finally, what's also new, and I think this is a real positive, is that the money system is a lot more lenient. Honestly, the money system was always a bit of an issue for me with the series, Armored Core 3 especially. It's when you don't know what to do and how to play the game well, you could really just like not earn enough money, or even go into negatives occasionally, which could really cause you to miss out on the key upgrades, and it could just spiral into a state where you would need to restart the entire playthrough, or like go way, way back with your saves just to regain the amount of money you would need to actually progress. That is absolutely not an issue in this game, unless you're really playing badly, and I mean like catastrophically badly. You're going to be earning plenty of cash for you to get the upgrades you want, the weapons you want, etc. anything you need. So there's quite a lot of new, there's a lot of the old that's left, but honestly, what I love most about this game is that this is not just a Souls game with an Armored Core skin on it. This is something I always wanted and talked about. I always said that if FromSoft revisits this series, I don't want it, like I said, just to be a Souls game with robots. And Armored Core 6 is absolutely not that. I think people who are struggling, and man, there is a lot of struggling, complaining and bitching on Reddit, Twitter, basically wherever I go. I think people who are having those issues with this game are having those issues because they're trying to play this as a Souls game. And when that doesn't work, they just jump on Twitter and start bitching about the dodge not having iframes. Listen, this is not a Souls game, and I'm so happy that this is not another spam dodge roll kind of game from FromSoft, because honestly, we've had that for a long time now, for the last couple of games, so I'm really happy that this is doing something different, where you have to rely on more of like the correct setup and aerial navigation, and just accepting the fact that, man, sometimes you're just gonna take damage. Honestly, it would look ridiculous, first of all, if your mechs could dodge roll and had iframes, I mean, that would be just like dumb as hell. And it would also really break the armored core feel of the game, and the game would really lose a lot of that sort of mech heaviness feel if you could just like, you know, dodge iframe through an incoming missile or something. I also love that this game is digestible. This is not an enormous open world 80 hour experience that you need to dedicate like two weeks of your life to, playing non-stop to actually complete. The mission based design really helps that you can sit down, play a couple of games, play for a couple of hours, come back days later and jump back in from where you left off. It's something that I think is getting really lost with modern day big budget games. I think developers are under the impression that if we give people more content, and that content most of the times is meaningless side quests and objective markers and all that, and slap that onto a giant open world, which takes like 80 hours to complete, but most of that is just spent going around the empty places, people will feel like they're getting their money's worth. But I think digestible, strongly built mission-based games still have their place, and I'm so glad that Armored Core brought that mechanic, and showed that games like this still have their place and can still be successful. Now, there is a balance to this, the mission-based design and the digestibility, and that is going to be how we get to minor issue number one that I have with this game, and that is the story. Now listen, the narrative overall seems very interesting, the world especially is fascinating and looks absolutely fantastic, I gotta say. The art direction is incredibly strong, like we are expecting from FromSoft. And like I said, there does appear to be a lot of effort put into the narrative, the voice acting is really good as well. But because of the game's structure, the story is essentially told in basically the worst way possible. You basically get the mission briefings, which are basically just boring audio powerpoints. There are cutscenes in the game, but they are mostly done to set up missions. You don't get a ton of story exposition from the cutscenes itself. 
It's just so easy to get lost in the jargon, characters do not have faces attached to them, so it's really difficult to keep track of who's who, who's aligned with who, and after a while it just becomes difficult to care. Now, this is a From game, so the focus has always been on gameplay over story, but I do think this is something worth mentioning, just because of the unfortunate thing of how much effort there is put into the story and the world, with how badly it's delivered. Not to mention the fact that there's quite a lot of dialogue that's told during missions, during action scenes via like audio conversations, where you're focused on like dodging a giant mech that's shooting missiles at you. The last thing on your mind is to pay attention to what your ally is saying and what the hell he's doing about the sort of corporations and all that. It also doesn't help with this that the mission-based nature of the game has you jumping around and switching factions like every 10 minutes. Not only does this lead to inconsistencies, but it makes it really difficult to connect with any of the factions. I mean, just to give you an example from chapter 1, you essentially have a mission where you destroy a rebel base, you demolish their forces, you, you blow up one of their giant artillery vehicles via a boss fight, and literally the next mission has you working for those very same rebels. Anyways, it might be a minor thing for a lot of people, but again, like I said, I think it's worth mentioning, just like I said, because I feel like there is quite a lot of missed potential here. Getting back to the game, another topic that comes up always with a FromSoft game is the difficulty. This is something that is worth discussing because Armored Core games are challenging, they've always been challenging, I've struggled with them too, because they represent a complete different kind of difficulty than a Souls game does. And one of the things that people were speculating is, well, is Armored Core 6 gonna be leaning more towards Souls difficulty or the classic Armored Core difficulty? And honestly, I gotta tell you that outside of a couple of cases, it doesn't really lean into any difficulty. This is minor gripe number two that I have with this game, in that to me, the main missions just seem incredibly easy. This is not a case of, oh well, I'm used to Armored Core or I'm used to Souls games, so I'm just like breezing through this. This is not that. The main missions early on, even into way into chapter two, are just incredibly easy. I think I can count on one hand how many missions there were that I had to restart. And even then, most of the restarts were just like me being stubborn that there are some missions that are timed and you have to collect a number of things and I just kept restarting to see if I can get like everything in one go. And you know, that difficulty thing is not necessarily a bad thing. Not everything needs to be Elden Ring millennia levels. But even so, I feel like this is worth mentioning because I know this is something people always focus on, and yeah, it's just jarring how easy the game is in terms of the main missions. Now, countering that, and this is the weird thing, and this is where the difficulty overall, which I normally wouldn't mind, becomes an issue, is that the boss fights are just simply incredibly hard. The chapter 1 end boss in particular has a lot of people upset, first of all, because he seems ridiculous. But he only seems ridiculous if you do not know what you are doing. Essentially, this is not a game where you can beat a boss unprepared if you are good enough. In other From games, even if you're caught off guard by like a random boss fight, and you don't have the best setup, the best equipment, if you are skilled enough, you can still beat that said boss. Maybe even on a couple of attempts. That is basically not going to happen in Armored Core 6. The first chapter boss will genuinely feel impossible, like doing almost zero damage, when his shields are down, like him reg regenerating, doing a ton of damage, is genuinely going to feel near impossible if you don't have the right weapons. The issue with this is twofold. One is, I think there could have been a little bit more of a consistent difficulty buildup. That chapter one boss is so, so jarring in the truest sense of the word. It really comes out of nowhere, and I think it's partially correct that people are a little bit upset because it really feels like the game is throwing something at you that you're not prepared for because there is no consistent build-up. Secondly, the game could do, I think, a little bit better of a job explaining what counters what. There are tutorials in the game, this is explained, but the game doesn't really cover the issue of pulse shields, for example. I had to spend a ton of time tinkering till I basically discovered that the boss's shields are broken really easily with dual wield machine guns. So what it basically boils down to is it really does feel like the boss is only defeatable with a very specific setup. 
And if you do not have that setup, you're essentially going to be struggling, which I think goes a little bit against the idea of something being fair and balanced in terms of difficulty because you essentially need a something specific. It's like if, you know, Godric the Grafted was only beatable with dual with long swords, and if you didn't have that, the boss would basically be unbeatable. Still, like I said, these are absolutely minor complaints. Even the chapter 1 boss became way easier once I figured out what build I should be rocking, and it's just something you have to think about and tinker with for every single one of the main event bosses. Although related to this, I do gotta bring up one more point. I gotta say it's kind of funny watching some of the people who have been shouting, you know, get good, get good at everyone in the Souls community for the past 6-7 years, who cannot beat, I don't know, Melania naked with a long sword, dodge rolling only, who are now absolutely losing their shit when they can't panic roll spam their way through fights. Anyways, to some of my thoughts, AC6 is absolutely awesome. I can't, rec I can't recommend this game enough. It's really one of those special games for me that I will keep coming back to. There is so much variety in how you play the game outside of the bosses and how you approach missions that I already cannot wait to jump back in and do a second playthrough, try different mechs, try more of a heavy build or try more energy weapons, etc. The world is beautiful, the setting is good, the game looks great, feels great to play, and if the above mentioned minor issues are not a deal breaker for you, you will have an absolutely fantastic time. Now I might do a full review of the game once I finish playthrough 1, but I'm only gonna do that if I have any significant differences in my opinion. I don't think that's gonna be the case, but who knows. For now, just know that whether you're a newcomer or a veteran of the series, you will most likely have a fantastic time with Armored Core 6. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to be returning to uploading again full time. Gonna be jumping back on that. So yeah, more videos are on the way. Thanks for watching everyone. Peace out and goodbye.